people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Hello viewers, I'm your host Yeshi with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Amidst the second Covid wave that has unleashed mayhem all across India, countries around the world have stepped up to support. From US to Russia to UAE to Thailand, all are sending oxygen equipment to medical supplies. Delhi is recording over 300,000 cases per day for past one week with experts fearing a further rise in both infections and mortality in coming weeks. The country's vaccination drive, which has already administered over 152 million jabs, is still short on providing a relief in the crisis. The first US flight carrying oxygen cylinders, regulators, rapid diagnostic kits, N95 masks and pulse oximeters arrived in the Indian capital New Delhi as India posted another record daily rise in coronavirus cases. The United States will send more than $100 million in medical aid, including 1,000 oxygen cylinders, 15 million N95 masks and 1 million rapid diagnostic tests. It also has redirected its own order of AstraZeneca supplies to India to allow it to make more than 20 million doses. Shipments from other countries continue to pour in, with a third one from the United Kingdom reaching earlier in the day. Romania and Ireland also sent supplies. Reflecting the United States' solidarity with India as it battles a new wave of COVID-19 cases, the United States is delivering supplies worth more than $100 million in the coming days to provide urgent relief to our partners in India. In addition, U.S. state governments, private companies, non-governmental organizations, and thousands of Americans from across the country have mobilized to deliver vital oxygen, related equipment, and essential supplies for Indian hospitals to support front frontline healthcare workers and the people of India most affected during this current outbreak. U.S. government flights will start arriving in India tonight, and they will continue into next week. Just as India sent assistance to the United States when our hospitals were strained early in the pandemic, the United States is determined to help India in its time of need. India received 22 tons of aid from its traditional ally Russia through two urgent flights in the wee hours that landed in New Delhi. The flight carried oxygen concentrators, ventilation equipment, bedside monitors, medicines and other essential pharmaceutical items. India will also be rolling out the Sputnik V vaccine from May. The Russian Federation decided to send humanitarian assistance to India in the spirit of the special and privileged strategic partnership between our two countries, as well as in the context of our anti-COVID-19 cooperation. For this purpose, two urgent flights operated by the Russian Amircom arrived here today. India's new coronavirus caseload has stayed above 300,000 over the past week, including setting numerous world records as a number of countries around the world pledged to send urgent medical aid to help tackle the crisis overwhelming its hospitals. It is not just India that has been swamped by an overwhelming number of infections, but the health system of entire South Asian region has been strained by the sudden explosion of COVID cases. Strict measures have come into place in Pakistan and the Himalayan nation, Nepal. The road ahead is not easy, as not only these countries are unprepared for a disastrous situation, but they are also dependent on others for vaccine supplies. 
In such a scenario, strict curbs including weekend curfews and lockdowns are only options they are left with. Pakistan army personnel were seen patrolling the streets of Lahore as the military were deployed to assist civilian authorities in enforcing COVID-19 restrictions across the country. A record 200 deaths were registered for the first time since the outbreak. The national positivity ratio, the number of infections among those tested, was 10.8%. The death rate, the number of infections resulting in fatalities, hit the highest point since the start of the pandemic, reaching around 2.2%. Now soldiers have been sent to 16 major cities to make sure residents wore masks in public and shops and non-essential businesses were closed after 6 p.m. The army, along with paramilitary officers and police forces, drove through the streets to check compliance to the rules. Military spokesperson Major General Babur Iftikhar announced the deployment in a televised message as the official said that the healthcare system was nearing its breaking point. Corona wabak ke khilaaf hafazati tadabir par amal dramat aur law and order situation ki buniyadi zimedari civil idaron ki hai. Pakistan army Emergency responders के तौर पर वबा के फैलाव को कंट्रोल करने के लिए दीगर कानून नाफिस करने वाले इदारों की भरपूर मुआवनत करेगी। Meanwhile, the Himalayan nation Nepal announced a two-week-long prohibitory order to curb the rising infection rate in the country. As many as 15 districts have gone into complete lockdown until 12th May. Barring essential services, no vehicle will be allowed to ply on roads and the security has been beefed up for the same. The national positivity ratio of Nepal in the current wave has been hovering around 30% with more people getting infected by a more contagious new variant. Authorities say they have also witnessed a sudden spike in the number of hospitalizations and deaths. Locals who bore the brunt of economic fallout due to restrictions last year have supported the move, saying the lives were more important. Virudra samarthan vanda vani oil man chale vivek ko prayog karnu parne belao. Samarthan gauri karnu parne avastha pan chahi na dheere man chale bhokas on dheere man chale gubeo saay bandha sa. Arthi ki sthiti ese pane amra ortan tar damadol sa hai na. Ortan tar kamzor bhai rakda kiri elle zon ortan tar lai samasya banao sa. तर फिर अब मं नई न रहे पी तो अर्थतंत्र रहने कुछ भी होते हैं पैलो कुरो तो मं बाो मं बाच सके बल्ल ते पच्चीस अर्थतंत्र को क्या होने हो क्या ते पच्चीस अरु अरु के आने तपसिल का कुछ अरुण ते भर अ कंडीसन में अज स्ट्रिक्टली हो रवर्मेंट ने के भापनी कर गवर्मेंट के गवर्मेंट के तरीका है पशुपत नारी चला देशो भाई हो जस्ते देखि है ते कारण हर एक नागरिक ने आपको स्वविवेक ने प्रयोग पेलो कुरो रोसों कुरो आपू बाच्ने अरुला बचाने बेला हो रहा एक हिसाब हम धर्म भाई धर्म चाहे हमी अथ आत्म अनुशासन में बस दिय रज आत्म अनुशासन में बस्ना प्रेरित ग्यौं तो धर्म हो Nepal with the population of around 29 million people have so far administered a little over 2 million doses. It is dependent on external supplies to inoculate its people. Till now, it has got supplies from both India and China for the same. However, with rising infections in neighborhood, the import is likely to receive a hit in coming times. Apparently, nobody from the civil society in Afghanistan to the lawmakers in Washington is convinced with President Joe Biden's plan of withdrawing entirely from Afghanistan by 11th September. Recently, a number of senators grilled Zalmay Khalilzad, Washington's special envoy to Afghanistan reconciliation, over possible repercussions, which they believe might reverse the progress made in the war-torn country.
Just days into President Biden's call of withdrawing completely from the war-torn country, prominent voices in the United States have started raising questions as to how feasible it will be to leave Afghanistan. Recently, lawmakers questioned President Joe Biden's envoy for Afghanistan on about how the administration plans to ensure women's rights if the hardline Islamist Taliban take control after U.S. troops withdraw by September. A number of U.S. Congress members have expressed skepticism about the plans to bring home the 2,500 remaining troops. They say they were worried the U.S. departure would cede control to the Taliban, whose 1996-2001 rule severely curtailed activities for Afghan women. What can you say publicly in terms of what the predictions are in terms of Taliban treatment of women should they take over the government? Again, I, you know, personally, I'm concerned about public executions and other forms of brutality that will just be so incredibly offensive. And if that's the case, what do we do? Are we going to sit back and just watch that, wring our hands, and mourn the fact that uh, we had made so much progress? And, and by the way, I think America and allies have to take pride in the progress that was made. I think that's probably our biggest concern here, is having that, all that progress uh, be for naught. Under the Taliban, women were barred from education or work, required to fully cover their bodies and faces, and could not leave home without a male relative. Moral offences were punished by flogging and stoning. When Biden made his announcement on April 14, he said the United States would continue providing assistance to Afghan security forces and to civilian programs, including those for women and girls. The September 11 deadline, which marks 20 years since the attacks on the United States that prompted Washington to go to war in Afghanistan, extended the U.S. presence there beyond a May 1 deadline negotiated under Trump. We don't have a good history of taking care of those who sided with us in conflict and making sure that if they feel they cannot sustain themselves in their country or are unwilling to do so, that we take care of them. And uh, that sends a global message. Don't fight with the Americans, because when they're finished, they leave you behind. That's not something we can tolerate. Zalmay Khalilzad, special envoy for Afghanistan reconciliation, while testifying before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said with conviction that the whole exercise will be conducted in such a manner that Afghan system doesn't collapse post-withdrawal. I don't personally believe uh, that uh, there will be an imminent collapse. I know there are others who have had a different view. Uh, I believe the choice that the Afghans face uh, is between uh, a negotiated political settlement uh, or a long war. Experts fear that a complete withdrawal could lead to the country erupting in a full-scale civil war, providing Taliban an opportunity to return. They also say that Afghan security forces have not reached a level of war competence where they can fight and defeat the Taliban and Al-Qaeda on their own. Their limited capabilities have further been dampened by scant resources. Threats and attacks against civil society members and other champions of freedom of speech have already increased sharply in past few months, with fears of this freedom receiving the fiercest of blow if the hardliners make a comeback. And now, in our section of Asia this week, the stories from across the continent that made news this week. Bangkok Suvarnabhumi Airport has converted part of its check-in terminal into a COVID-19 vaccination center. 
The 42 check-in counters on the fourth floor of the facility are now processing vaccinations for airport staff, airline staff and immigration officials instead of airplane tickets. The venue opened for vaccinations on April 26 and is overseeing 1,000 vaccinations a day. The airport is in the process of preparing the facility to open to the public for vaccinations depending on the government directives. The government has ordered parks, gyms, cinemas and daycare centres in its capital, the epicentre of the latest wave of infections, to shut from April 26 until May 9. The country has reported a total of 61,699 since the pandemic began. Thailand plans to procure more vaccines from several producers with the vaccination goal of 300,000 doses per day to inoculate at least 50 million people by end 2021. About 100 South Korean athletes and coaches travelling to Tokyo for the Olympics this year received their first doses of COVID-19 vaccine as the country struggles to keep its inoculation drive on track amid supply shortages. Roughly 500 others will be vaccinated by the first week of May before they travel to Japan, the Korean Sport and Olympic Committee said. Overall, more than 900 people from South Korea's delegation will be vaccinated. Of those, 598 athletes and coaches will receive Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine, which requires a shorter interval between doses than the AstraZeneca shot, which will be provided to administrative staff as long as they are older than 30, the KSOC said. The games pushed back by a year due to the pandemic are set to run from July 23 to August 8 in Tokyo. Motorbike riding is gaining immense popularity in Japan, especially among the youngsters. For helping these newbies in learning motorbike riding efficiently, Yamaha Motor Sales has come up with the Yamaha Riding Academy, where youngsters are taught the basis of motorcycle riding. These motorbikes are used for teaching people how to ride bikes. まあ、the motorbikes used during the training process are equipped with a device that measures GPS logs to obtain data on position, speed and acceleration during driving. During the lesson, riders drive on a test course with poles under the guidelines of an instructor. In the corner part, a photo is taken. At the first run, the driving data is obtained from the measurement device and then the instructor advises the rider for better driving. The measurement data displays the speed where it accelerated and how it is structured to turn corners to make it easier for the rider to understand. After listening to the instructor's advice, the rider starts to drive again. Yamaha's accumulated know-how as a pioneer in motorsport helps riders around the world. Bike lessons like these will also be organized in China and Thailand. This light blue ice cream has inspired visitors by refreshing impressions in Japan. The soft ice cream name is Hakkai. Mount Fuji is the highest mountain in Japan. Hakkai soft ice cream has a unique relationship with Mount Fuji.富士山は溶岩でできている山になりますので、溶岩石というものは大変ろ過に水のろ過に向いているんですね。はい、なので20年かけてろ過された水なのでとても透明度の高い綺麗な水が湧いております。Mount Fuji contains a lot of lava. Snow and rain melt by the lava of Mount Fuji, then get filtered to crystal clear water, which becomes spring water in the pond. The place has a souvenir shop, Ikumoto, that sells Hakkai soft ice creams introduced by Nisei. 
The ice cream has flavors like matcha, peach, and muscat. Japanese company Nissei's efforts to develop characteristic soft ice cream to make customers and foreign tourists happy. Moving on to our cultural section in which we take you to the different parts of India where Hindu devotees recently marked the annual festival of Hanuman Jayanti amid the raging coronavirus pandemic. The events were largely silent owing to COVID-induced restrictions. Hanuman Jayanti is a significant Hindu festival that marks the birth anniversary of Lord Hanuman, who is believed to put an end to the miseries and hardships of his followers. Hindu devotees in several parts of India offered prayers from outside temples on the occasion of Hanuman Jayanti to mark the birth anniversary of Hindu god Lord Hanuman due to the deteriorating COVID-19 situation across the country. On this day, devotees usually observe a day-long fast, perform puja by offering vermilion or red cloth with flowers like marigold visit the temple and carry out processions and religious gatherings. Various kinds of foods, sweets, coconut and flowers are also offered to Lord Hanuman and distributed to his followers as prasad. Every year the festival is celebrated in a grand manner, but this year due to coronavirus that has particularly strained the health system of the entire country, in the past three weeks, most of the temples were shut. जो safety के रखे गए हैं मंदिर की तरफ से प्रशासन की तरफ से बहुत अच्छे रखे गए हैं और आज अनुमान जंती की सबको आपको हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं। दूसरा मैं तो हर मंगलवार आता हूं पिछले दस साल से आ रहा हूं और ये भगवान की जो मर्जी है इसके आगे तो कोई टिक नहीं सकता। हम तो सबको भाई बहनों को चाहते हैं कि अपने अपने घरों में रहें और भगवान सब पे कृपा करें और कोरोना काल को नाश करें और यही चाहते हैं जो सेफ्टी के तौर पे मंदिर को बंद किया गया बस यही मैं कहना चाहता हूं The festival is marked every year on the occasion of Chaitra Purnima observed on the full moon day in the month of Chaitra as per Hindu almanac that usually falls in the months of March or April In Jabalpur city Devotees were seen maintaining social distance while offering prayers in the temple. Most temples and local administrations have imposed restrictions on movement and gatherings for festival in light of rapidly rising cases of coronavirus. <laughs> लोगों को सुरक्षित रहना पुलिस का दायित्व है उनको समझाई दी गई है कि वो घर में रह के अपनी पूजा अर्चना करें और भीड़ का हिस्सा ना बने हिंदू लॉर्ड हनुमान इज अ सिंबल ऑफ वाइटैलिटी एंड स्ट्रेंथ ही इज आल्सो बिलीव्ड टू हेल्प डेविटीज गेट रिड ऑफ इविल इन्फ्लुएंसेस इन हिंदू एपिक रामायण Hanuman helped his master Lord Ram to annihilate the kingdom of Sri Lanka headed by Ravan who had kidnapped his wife Sita and enabled her rescue. Hanuman Jayanti is the most popular one in North Indian states and it is also widely celebrated in neighboring Nepal. With that we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.